So I've had more than a few of you guys want to know more about our bulldoze pickups or more or less our F-series pickups on the property. We got about five of them right now. No, six. No, six. Yeah, we got about six of them on the property right now. So let's go over them. Welcome to Ohio State. So first off, let's talk about Old Blue, the old faithful Steve that most of you guys know about. She's a 6.9 IDI four-wheel drive unit, super cab, long bed, and it has a T19 four-speed manual transmission and an MP208 aluminum transfer case. That's going to be a chain-driven transfer case. And then all that drive shaft goes to the 10 and a quarter rear end. It's now an open diff. And then the front is a Dana 50 with an open diff. There's a little bit of the side view, a little bit of the long view there. There's a little bit of the back view. This there. truck here has a few modifications to it to help it along. It has a Sky Manufacturing two and a half inch front level and reverse shackle kit on the front that I slimmed down to basically be an inch and a half only level because I want to raise up the back a little bit. I don't really like the flat. I just wanted to raise up a little bit so we wouldn't rub on 36 by 9 inch military tires that this fella used to have when we had it originally. Yeah, there's the Sky Manufacturing Kit. It's basically a big bolt-on piece. Moves your shackle to the back. Rides decent-ish for a Dana 50. Anyway, the kit's technically made for a solid Dana 60 front end. It works okay on the Dana 50. We made our own kind of lift kit there. We got a James Duff. I think it's Duff Tough or whatever drop pivot bracket they're two and a half inch and then we have a two and a half inch drop pitman arm as well i think that's also duff top this truck again has the nice old 69 idi inside we have two red top optima batteries got an electric lift pump a db electrical db2 mini starter down in the bottom it's a high torque mini starter works a lot better than the factory unit. we got some el cheapo walmart led light bar light type dealies they work really good for what it is. This guy is just a work truck at the moment. That's always what it's always been. Might not be like that in the future, but right now she's a work truck. So those really, really help out. And you don't ruin the aesthetic by putting lights everywhere on the front. To be honest, super cabs really aren't my favorite thing in the entire world. I'm more of a single cab or four door type guy. This is kind of how it goes. Super cab's always been kind of the middle child at the end of it but you know what i gotta pretty much give credit where credit is due me and this old ford have been together now for seven years we resurrected it basically from sitting inside a field old guy died and she was an estate sale and it was gonna get crushed we bought it for 300 bucks at the end of it and basically replaced every single last bit of steel on it make a scene that's very happy okay let's just put a happy little mountain something about like that on it our fingers our hands have been all over this actually truck. one of the very first welding jobs i've ever done is on this pickup right here and it shows it shows at the end of the day but we ended up putting new rockers in it rebuilding pretty much the floor from the transmission tunnel over and you know what? It's treated us really, really good so far. This old pickup has treated us so well that come October, right before winter, he's going to be going inside the barn for it might be upwards of a couple years, you know. We're going to blow them all apart. And we're actually going to fix them up proper the way we should have at the very beginning. Take our time with it. I think it deserves it. But anyway, that's Old Faithful, that's Old Blue. Let's keep moving down the roster. This right here is my grandfather's 1985 F350 cabin chassis. It has a 300 i6, an MP435, four-speed cast iron transmission, a big old two-piece drive shaft going to either a Dana 60 or a Dana 70 dually rear end. A little bit of the side view. A bit of the front view there. Here's a little bit of the rear Here's view. the inside. She's pretty rotten, not going to lie, but she's an old work truck. It's just how it is, but we're going to kind of bring her back to life there. Got the triple pedals, 
Got your shifter, all Actually, the good stuff. We haven't been in here for over a year. Let's see, just, you know, what's Here inside? we go, just like we left it. The old six in a row, ready to tow. The, the old, old Ford 300i6, the Ford Big Six. It's still inside, still hanging out. See that NP435 just hanging out there on the bottom. Now this old pickup, Grampy used to haul wood to Fredericton with it all the live long day. And it's one of the only vehicles that he had that we have. And it's one of the only vehicles that he had that we personally had memories in with him. As he was doing wood and stuff, we would help him load it. Little things like there. Not all the time, but you know, often enough that it was a memory from my childhood at the end of the day. This old fella, you know, you're going to see as we go down the line, there's a couple vehicles here for parts for him. He's pretty rotten at the end of the day, the old frame on this fella. We did a big three-day thrash on this fella to take him from Fredericton all the way down here. That's about 300 kilometers, which is pretty wild. And, you know, we had to cobble some things together, like do the lights and get the charging system all done, do tires. Like, it was a lot of stuff. And there were certain things along the way that I never showed you guys that we kind of had to do off camera. But now I think it's a good time that I can show you. So let's take a peek. Uh, first off, we got the gas tank held up with chains and mechanics wire. You're going to see a lot of this uh, mechanics wire. It's kind of a common theme going throughout this entire truck. This is actually a tank of a 2500 Ram, I think. We called it the puddle tank because that's where we found it. It was full of mud in the puddle. Kind of retrofitted them on because the old tank had a hole right through it. I think the front tires are off of a cobalt at the end of the day. <laughs> Doesn't really fit the truck. And then the backs, you know, who needs matching size tires at the end of the day? You can have one that's a lot bigger than the other. It's still going to roll down the road fine. Oh, yeah, for sure. All the cross members are rotten out all the way through. And then, you know, behind the shackle mounts and everything, she's rotten through as well. It's uh, not good. Held on by mechanics wire. It's still holding on pretty good. But we had to put it there because the steel was giving out. Wanted to make we it got home. a frame section more fluffy than Bill a bear himself. And, uh, you know, the transmission cross member in this was non-existent. So what we opted to do was put a chain and a chain binder across the frame and across the transmission. That way, if the, you know, the transmission cross member let go on the side of the highway or going down the road, the chain binder would hold it. That was the theory anyway. What? All that might have worked pretty darn slick because this truck made it 300 kilometers home. Didn't even skip a beat. It just kind of, wee, you know, squealed a belt about 30 kilometers from home. That was it. All the lights, all the brakes, everything worked after we went through it for the mad thrash for three days. We got a whole video on it. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. If you guys want to watch a movie, it's on the channel somewhere. Yeah, we got big plans for this fella. He's not a vehicle that we're ever going to sell. So we got to kind of work on him, throw him together the best we can and make it so then this vehicle can still be put to work much like it has always been doing. I think that's going to be the best way to keep her going now you know me i don't like part and out complete vehicles but you know sometimes some vehicles have to die in order for other ones to go and trust me this one's not very good but it's going to keep two vehicles on the road one you can guess the other one is the international inside the barn we're not going to touch on him in this video but this old pickup is a 1985 f350 and it had a 6.9 IDI and a T19 four-speed transmission. And then it was a, you know, a cabin chassis flavor. And we got a good amount of steel that we can reuse for other things, basically from here back, which we plan on doing. And then I believe it's either a Dana 60 or Dana 70 rear end. But look at the leaf packs on this fella. Yes, sir. She was doing some heavy And hauling. you know, she's got all the fixings, like some good cross members inside her. And good rails going all the way back. I believe the rear end's still good. All that stuff. So we can use a lot of pieces on this guy to repair him. Not so much the frame, but we're going to keep the section. You'll see why. But the other pieces can be thrown onto this guy. There's still a few good parts on this that we got to take off. We got to take the brake booster, brake master, clutch master, all that stuff. We got to take the cowl off, windshield wiper arms, front frame section, you know, a whole bunch of extra stuff that we want spindles and spindle barons all that stuff we still got a good amount of good parts in here like this column and part of the gauge cluster is going inside the international inside the barn 
Got a 1350 Bog Werner transfer case that's kind of hanging out in here. I'm going to put them on something. Got some cool bucket seats. I think they're out of a Kona line van. Can likely use those for something. Door panels. The top to this guy is actually in super good shape. It's only just a small little crack right there. And that's it. That's uh, kind of unheard of for this. Wood grain interior, all that stuff. So a lot of the parts on this guy are going to make his way into other vehicles. We're going to be basically cutting them. Eventually, this fella right here is going to get the old whack, whack, or slice, slice. And he's going to end up uh, in a tin can or something like that. But we're going to take a lot of parts off this guy. For that blue fella right over there and the International in the barn, and some other things down the road that you guys are gonna see, but he's gonna live on a lot of other trucks. But let's just keep on going. With the Dana 44 low pinion out of an early Bronco, we got plans for him, but just kind of waiting on the right vehicle for him. But either way, we wanna talk this about this. This fella right here used to be a truck, 6.9 IDI and a ZF5 two wheel drive transmission all the way to the back. And again, a Dana 70 or a Dana 60 dually rear end in the back not sure the gear ratio none of that but you can likely guess this frame right here is going to be the one for the blue truck grampy's truck at the end of the day the 6.9 is going to come out all that stuff we're going to strip her clean and then grampy's truck is basically going to go on top of this guy we will have good bones to start out with then and other than paint and a little bit of rust repair we're going to try to you know spend as little money as we can restoring Grampy's truck. So out of the three, we're going to take the best of the brakes, the best of the rims, the best of the bearings, all that stuff, the best components out of the three, and make one truck at the end of the day that's going to work hard for us, and it's going to keep on living and keep on going. Lots of good parts in this. We're going to be cutting some stuff up off it for a big steel run coming. That's going to be cool. But yeah, that's about it for this guy. The 6.9 ADI is more or less a core, but we'll dive into him someday. And see just what went wrong with that guy. I don't know the history on it. Nothing like that. Let's keep on moving. Now, you guys know this truck right here. This is our 1996 Ford F-150 that we built to, you know, look like a bullnose pickup at the end of the day. We shortened it. A whole bunch of stuff will go front to back on her. But she has a 460 big block, a T-19 four-speed transmission going to a... Uh, Ford 8.831 spline rear end with a Ford Racing True Track limited slip differential in the back. It's quite a handful. I think it has 308 gears, but either way, the big block, she'll slay tires, and we proved that in the last episode. Now, as for upgrades, long list. Other than the bullnose conversion, we got the short bed conversion that we did to her. We have the 460 big block long tube headers going all the way back. To true duels three and a half inch exhaust right off the headers to a flow master 40 original 40 on the back again we got a true track ford racing differential and we got some huge ladder bars to eliminate the wheel hop and drive shaft destruction that we've been going through for the last little bit the things that happens when you do fabrication sometimes you win some sometimes you lose some and you know if there's any small vibration at all coupled with the wheel hop Adios drive shaft to roof. The track bar is really, really helped For out. The with interior, that. we got an old wooden wheel out of another truck that we used to have here, 1986 Ford F 150. She's out of that truck. And then we got a little bit of the wood grain interior, all that stuff. Not a lot to see in here. Retrofitted the 80s interior into the 90s cab. It is possible, all that stuff. 90s doors, all that Unit. stuff. It's always been good to us. Never really let us down unless it was our own, you know, stupidity at the end of the day that caused it. But, yeah, that's the old big block race truck. Has a lot, a lot of stuff coming for it. Going to be bringing her closer to the ground, maybe adding a little bit more horsepower. It's going to come with time. And then that brings us to this little fella, our newest acquisition for High Hill Stable Garage. And I know what you're going to say. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This truck's been here quite a lot. We've seen this truck before. And that's true. Used to be my brother's truck. Now it's our truck. Again, old blue, he's going inside the barn for, you know, year and a half, two years. Pretty soon in October, we need a winter vehicle. This guy is going to work out just fine. Now she's a 302 C4 or C6 truck at the end of the day, going to a 31 spline 8.8 .8 rear end. We've got plans for this little fella. There's a lot to go through. There's a lot of scheduled maintenance that we got to do to this guy. 
show you guys a little bit of that that we usually don't show you on the build trucks now this old pickup the plan for him we got a lot of scheduled maintenance we got to do to this guy basically polish him up make him pretty at the end of the day but we're also going to be modifying things in a tasteful manner upgrading things to simplify the life of the vehicle being that she's a pretty much complete larry truck we're not going to really modify the bodywork or anything like that or the rust but pretty much as you see it is how she's going to be but what we are going to do is you know simplify the electrical gremlins and the vacuum gremlins the things that ford couldn't simplify at one the of time. the which is uh ford's state of the art first year of efi in the f-series pickups it's a absolute mess inside there wiring wise we're likely going to simplify that make it a lot easier upgrade to a slightly newer system maybe a holly efi or something like that just kind of get rid of a lot of the extra wires and stuff that doesn't have to be there clean up the this truck fella's going to be a daily driver likely for two years at the end of the day so we got to live in her you know what i mean make her our own polish her up make her nice make it that we can depend on it that's the you plan. You're going to see little bits of this fella sprinkled in inside our videos just because we got to get this guy ready to replace old blue in October. So there's a lot of things to go through. But I think you guys are going to like it nonetheless. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kind of give you an insight of how the old trucks are doing. And if you had any questions on the big components of each truck, well, now you know. I'll catch you guys in the next one really, really soon. All right, see ya.